This is my electrolysis de-rusting setup. Um, I've got a 30 gallon uh, plastic barrel there um, with 10 rebars going down into it, all of which are connected together uh, with heavy copper, basically grounding wire that if you were to like wire a house, um, electrical code requires six gauge ground wire uh, connecting to ground rods going in the ground. That's where I got that wire from is the hardware store. Um, the rebar, those are two foot long sections of rebar uh, when I purchased them. Uh, basically come in uh, lengths of 20 feet. Good idea to get the hardware store to cut the rebar for you. Uh, you do not want to wear out hacksaw blades trying to cut that stuff, trust me. And at 15 cents a cut, um, got 10 rebars, that's a buck and a half. Saved you about two hours worth of work, trust me, you want to do that. Uh, on the left, you'll see a DC power supply that allows me to both adjust the voltage and the amperage. Um, I know a lot of people have been using uh, in their de-rusting setups um, car chargers, car battery chargers. Uh, to me, I didn't want to go that route for essentially about the same money as a medium-priced uh, car charger. Uh, I wanted one where I could actually dial in the voltage and the amperage and just kind of experiment with what works, what doesn't work. Um, and this one here on the left there, that actually does a really good job. I think I paid, shoot, it was like 40 bucks on eBay for the thing. Uh, the barrel I got on eBay uh, for about 55 and that included shipping. Uh, it was an old food barrel, uh, food quality barrel. As you can see, it's still got stickers on the side of it. I really don't care about that. Um, and then the rebar and all the other stuff. I probably got total into this setup, including those little, those little, um, um, things that the copper wires are going into, those are um, housing electrical conduit uh, connectors. They're designed to actually connect metal conduit that you run wire into. And the reason I chose them is because they had uh, the ability to clamp the rebar and the copper wire together into a single, you know, good solid electrical connection. As you can see, the uh, screws allow you to uh, get a good solid clamping on it. I looked at other options, you know, everything from using uh, hose clamps and other things. Uh, these at 79 cents a piece uh, were really affordable and they hold the rebar uh, so it's actually suspended in the fluid, as you can see the fluid. And also you see the scaly rust on the rebar. Uh, that's a good indicator that you've uh, actually getting rust off the object that you're uh, trying to de-rust because uh, these things are sacrificial but I wanted something that would uh, work around the perimeter completely of this thing so that I had um, the electrolysis would actually work on all faces of the object that's sunk into it rather than having uh, the sacrificial anode being in one corner and then having to rotate my piece uh, so the 10 rebar is in a circular pattern uh, create a nice uh, environment that the electrolysis is going to work literally in a 360 degree circle around the thing. Um, I have a wooden lid, not really a lid, but a cross piece that I set up to hang the objects from. I've got five different hanging points, as you can see. Um, each hanging point has a hook and you basically hang uh, the object from a piece of mechanics wire, which is inexpensive. But you'll also notice these, these clips. This allows me to individually connect to specific ones. I can have up to five objects hanging in here at the same time. Um, I'm experimenting with different sizes of clips just to see, and some of them are copper, some of them are you know, regular, this one, as you can see, is actually starting to rust. I think I'm gonna go with, replace these with all copper ones. Uh, again, I got these clips off of uh, eBay for almost nothing. Um, and then I just simply take the um, DC power supply, and I've even gone to the trouble of putting little plus signs on the uh, copper wire around the perimeter, so you clip on your plus. And then let's say I have something hanging from this one here. Um, I'll just simply clip the negative to it. Now, if I need to feed additional things, uh, I have these additional wire, no, wires that I can uh, connect over to it. 
or and one of the things that I do is also as a secondary so I'm not dependent upon the mechanics wire to conduct the electricity down to the object I'll just stick this down into the water and clip it onto the object that I'm trying to de-rust that way I know I got a good solid electrical connection going to it um, but that's why each one of these um, has a you know one of these attached to it I may wind up just cross connecting all of these so that I have I can connect to one and then they all get electricity uh, that's probably just gonna be a little upgrade um, but as you can see it's, it's a nice unit I wanted to do something a little bit bigger than you know your typical you know five gallon bucket because in there and I've seen a lot of people have run into the problem where they can only literally de-rust part of an object and they have to flip it over and de-rust the other side I wanted to just go whole hog and you know this will this will de-rust almost anything I could throw at it I mean short of going like to a 55 gallon drum or you know or maybe a small septic tank that I would set up for like industrial scale but I'm not not interested in doing that this is it's really more of an experiment just to see what I can do with it um, so there it is that's my de-rusting setup these are two exhaust manifolds from an engine that I'm actually doing work on uh, the one on the bottom there as you can see has definitely got no rust on it um, and it has actually gone through the electrolysis de-rusting system that I made uh, stuck it in there actually for a couple of weeks it probably was done after a week or so but I just let it run anyhow as you can see um, what surface rust you see there actually that's since me cleaning it up but as you can see the scaly rust the really nasty stuff now that needs to be brushed with a wire brush but compared to what's on this manifold here um, the de-rusting tank did an amazing job of getting it to where um, now I basically I'm going to use a uh, Harbor Freight baking soda blaster and get the thing down to just shiny metal. Um, one detail, before I put it in the tank, you see this little spot right here? I uh, actually took a buffing wheel and buffed the, that little bit of metal down to shiny metal before putting it in the tank. And that was so that when I clipped the electrical wire to it, I had some something that would resemble a good electrical contact. Uh, without that, I'm sure that rust is not a very good conductor. Um, again, you can see the huge difference between the two. Uh, both this one here pretty much looked exactly like that one there. They just happened to be both off the same V8 engine. So you kind of have a before and after of uh, just how good a system um, electrolysis is uh, for getting rust. Uh, the reason I also chose these manifolds, um, this one, uh, was so that I have a essentially a worst case situation I wanted the worst rustiest nastiest thing that would take just hours literally to sand the rust off of it and just give the system a test really essentially an acid test of how well it would work